They rejected it. God's condemnation thus afflicts the disbelievers. This is something that uh, we talked about uh, at noon today. The ego. The, uh, as you see from the, at the beginning of this book, if you open the cover and go a few sheets, you see that uh, when God alone is mentioned, across from that you see uh, verses from uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Prophesying the advent of the Prophet Muhammad, <coughs> the final prophet. You see, uh, Moses in Deuteronomy 18.15 says, A prophet like me. Meaning, a message-bearing messenger. Will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your kinsmen? The Arabs and Jews are kinsmen. To him you shall listen. And in Deuteronomy 18, 18, 19, God, is say, God says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you. God was speaking to Moses. From among their kinsmen, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. If any man will not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. So there is the prediction of the coming of the Prophet Muhammad to the Jews. Of course, the Jews also were expecting the Messiah, Jesus. But when he came, they, they wouldn't uh, acknowledge him. He was a human being like them, in spite of the miracles that he showed them. They failed to recognize, they called him imposter, a carpenter, not God's messenger. It's just, you've seen today how bad the human being is. And we are the hardcore egotistic gang among God's creatures. And as you see here, God is saying, uh, I will put my words in his mouth, to him he shall listen. The Jews were aware of this, as far as the Messiah was concerned, as far as Muhammad was concerned. But uh, it takes killing the ego to sit down and listen to a human being like you and me. This is what we're exercising now, we're killing our ego in order to be redeemed, knowing that we are, we are listening to God's word in the Quran. We're submitting to God. So whatever God does or says, in the New Testament, you see the statement here from John 14, 16, 17. I will ask the Father and he will give you another paraclete to be with you always, the Spirit of Truth. And in, G in John 16, 13, when the Spirit of Truth comes to you, he will guide you to all truth and will announce to you the things to come. So uh, the Christians also were given uh, prophecy about the Prophet Muhammad. But when he came, brought with the Quran a fantastic miracle, and uh, he told them to worship God alone. He told them who Jesus was, but they still we cannot recognize him. And this is extended to the messenger of the covenant. The uh, the Muslims are recipients of the scripture. And God told them in the scripture, the message of the covenant will come. After all, the prophets have delivered their messages. And I'm quoting here Malachi. Though I will, I am sending the message, my messengers to prepare the way before me. And suddenly, they will come to the temple, the Lord whom you seek. And the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, which is Rabbil Alameen in Arabic. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire. He will sit purifying and refining. So again it's the ego here. Who will endure the day of his coming? I mean, how can you tell us that two verses that the Quran we've known all along had two verses wrong? How do you tell us that the Salat prayer we've been doing has been wrong. And as you know, God blessed us, but because we did this gradually, we, we, we fixed, we were doing everything wrong. You and I were doing everything wrong. 
and takes it takes killing the ego to to give up things that we've been we've been taught by our parents and things that uh, we've been doing for a long time it takes uh, actually it takes more courage and more strength to say I was wrong I'm gonna do the right thing now I'm gonna give up what was wrong even though my parents taught me that. But this is not the case with the majority of people. And this is what the Muslims are doing today. The Quran clearly says Muhammad was not the last messenger, he was a messenger of the covenant. And uh, I'm not harping on this issue, but just uh, the verse happens to state that, 89. When a scripture came to them from God, confirming what they have, and even though they used to prophesy its advent to the disbelievers, when their own prophecy came to pass, they rejected it. God's condemnation thus afflicts the disbelievers. So this brings out their disbelief, because they claim to be believers. And they claim to believe the Quran. Yet when the Quran comes to pass, a, a Quranic prophecy, they fail to, uh, to uphold it. These same people who are rejecting the message of the covenant would have rejected the Prophet Muhammad if they existed at the same time. They would have been the first to fight. In fact, the Prophet struggled for 13 years in Mecca. They were rejecting him, stoning him, uh, banishing him, boycotting him and his followers. <laughs> These are the same people. And uh, those uh, big wigs who are meeting in Chicago to preserve the finality of Prophet, they would, be, they would have been the first people to fight the Prophet Muhammad if they existed in his time. In fact, they are, they are Abu Lahabs, every single one of them. I mean, who was Abu Lahab? Abu Lahab was the religious leader of his time, following the, the corrupted religion of Abraham, Islam, of submission. And he opposed the Prophet Muhammad, who was telling him, most of God alone, here is the scripture of this religion. Abu Lahab fought. Number 90. Miserable indeed is what they sold their souls for, disbelieving in God's revelations, out of sheer resentment that God should bestow His grace upon whomever He chooses from among His servants. Consequently, they incurred wrath upon, upon wrath. Such disbelievers have deserved humiliating retribution. Why do they have to take these verses? This assignment. Anyway, these are quite relevant to what is happening to us these days. Miserable indeed is what they sold their souls for, disbelieving in God's revelation. God tells them a messenger will come after all the prophets, but they disbelieve. It's very clear in the Quran. This is why they're so uh, dumb in the, in the sense that they don't say anything. They're very quiet. They don't know what to say. That's why they're getting their top leaders to put their heads together, pat each other in the back, and uh, and the gang together to distort the definition of prophet and message. They don't believe God's revelations. Out of sheer resentment that God should bestow His grace upon whomever He chooses from among His servants. Where is Douglas? Is Douglas here? Hey, Douglas. Douglas was uh, rooming in a hotel in one of the conferences of the probably social scientists, Muslim social scientists. And this is one of the top leaders of the Muslims in America, Elias Bayounis is his name. And uh, he, uh, he rejected the, the mathematical miracle of the Quran, this Bayounis. And then uh, the next day, uh, Douglas is going to correct me if I'm wrong. The next day, uh, Douglas realized that he actually knows the miracle and he believes in it. So Douglas asked him, uh, you take it from there. Why, why don't you recognize the miracle? What did he say? Uh, why, why didn't you recognize the miracle? And his response was, it didn't come from one of us. It didn't come from one of us Muslim scholars, religious scholars. He said that, he said that Rashad didn't have the right faith. He's not one of us. He's yeah. not one of us. He's not a religious alien. He's not one of us. Well, <laughs> so this is exactly what this verse is saying. 
out of sheer resentment, not because it is not the truth, or because they do not recognize it, or because they don't understand it, but it's simply out of sheer resentment that God should bestow his grace upon whomever he chooses from among his servants. Consequently, they incurred wrath upon wrath. Such disbelievers have deserved humiliating retribution. I want to uh, share with you some other verses related to this. Yep, they're human beings. Ego, ego is the big disaster. Twenty-one thirty-six. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, let's look at twenty-one thirty-six. Twenty-one thirty-six. Was it similar to that statement that uh, they told Douglas? Under the subtitle, All Messengers Ridicule, 36, When those who disbelieved see you, they ridicule you. Is this the one who talks about your idols? They totally disregard the message of the most gracious. This is not the verse that I want to show you. But it's related. Hmm? So there's another one. Okay, let's look 2541. 2541 must be the one I have in mind. They're very similar words. Twenty five forty one, again messengers ridiculed. When they saw you, they always ridiculed you. Is this the one chosen by God to be a messenger? He almost diverted us from our gods, if it were not that we steadfastly revered them. Counsel for preservation of the finality of prophecy. <laughs> they will certainly find out, when they see the retribution, who are the real strayers from the past. Oh my gosh, 43. <laughs> Have you seen the one whose god is his ego? <laughs> are you going to be his advocate? So this is the reason why they cannot accept a human being, and this is exactly why God said, if I sent, if I sent a human, uh, an angel, God said, even if I sent an angel as a messenger, I would send them in the form of a human being, and I would confuse them as they are confused. <laughs> miserable indeed, number 90, back to, <clears throat> miserable indeed is what they sold their souls for, disbelieving in God's revelations out of sheer resentment that God should bestow his grace upon whomever he chooses from among his servants. Consequently, they incurred wrath upon wrath. Such disbelievers have deserved humiliating retribution. Let me share a couple more verses with you. Uh, so we can cover the subject and hopefully not see it for another long time. Then we'll move on. 43, 32. Probably 31. We'll look at it. Okay, 31. Muhammad ridiculed. They said, if only this Quran was sent down through another man from the two communities, Mecca or Medina, who is prominent. They didn't like the Prophet Muhammad. And these very same people would have done the same thing then. Now, 30, 32 says, Are they the ones who assign your Lord's mercy? You have assigned their shares in this life, raising some of them above others in ranks, in order to let them serve one another. However, the mercy from your Lord is far better than any material 
这边好了。But the same idea that uh, applies to material things also applies to uh, God's mercy as far as God blessed us to be believers. They, they, uh, they cannot uh, do anything if they resent that. 91, back to page 14. 91, when they are told, you shall believe in what God has sent down herein, they say, we believe only in what was sent down to us. They reject subsequent revelation, even if it is the truth from the Lord, and even though it confirms what they have. Say, if you did believe in the revelations given to you, why then did you kill God's prophets, if you are truthful? As you know, the prophets of Israel, almost all of them were killed by the, uh, the, by the children of Israel. Lessons from Israel, 92. Moses went to you with profound miracles, yet you worshipped the calf in his absence, and you turned wicked. Also, we made a covenant with you, as we raised Mount Sinai above you, saying, You shall uphold the commandments we have given you, strongly, and listen. But they said, We hear, but we disobey. Their hearts became filled with adoration for the calf due to their disbelief. Say, miserable indeed is what your faith dictates upon you, if you do have any faith. 94. Say, if the abode of the hereafter is really reserved for you at God, to the exclusion of all other people, then you should long for death, if you are truthful. They never long for it, because of what their hands have sent forth. God is fully aware of the wicked. I want to go back to verse uh, 92. Moses went to you with profound miracles. Yet you worship the calf in his absence, and you turn wicked. Because this again was, uh, is a continuation of the khutbah today, on how bad the humans are, and how fortunate we are. And we must thank God and say, Alhamdulillah, thank him profusely for guiding us. This will be our prayer, inshallah, in heaven. As you know from the Quran, we're going to spend eternity saying, thank God for guiding us. Uh, I wanted to actually to say this in the khutbah, but I forgot. Do you know how many people believed in Moses after all the miracles, after parting the Red Sea? 120,000 people, they estimate, watched the Red Sea part. Did everybody see a hill of water? There are two hills of water on the side. And these people walked between two hills of water. And if you saw the movie, it made a very good approximation. The, the Ten Commandments. This will be the mill. Did a good job there. And then, after they crossed, Pharaoh and his army goes behind them, and they drown and die. The enemies before their eyes. God says in the Quran, "Before your eyes, they saw this, and many other miracles." So, how many people believed that they, the very end, when they said they reached the destination, and Moses said, "Now go into Jerusalem." They said, "There are people there who don't want to go and fight with them. You and you, your Lord, go and fight. We're going to sit right here." Two people. Moses, Aaron, and two people. That's how bad the humans are. Now, fortunately, Surah 5, verse 23. This is where it tells us just two people believed with Moses. Now, I don't want to be too scared. <laughs> because this is not applicable. The same principle is applicable to us. We thank God for it. That God assigned us to this generation. We are very fortunate because the last surah in the Quran revealed, surah 110, is 19 words and talks about entering God's religion in many, in great numbers. And this is applicable to us. The first verse is 19 letters and the whole surah is 19 words. But at the same time, don't be lax. You must watch your ego. Because uh, making it, as you see, and uh, worshipping God alone and killing our ego is the greatest triumph. We've made quite a few mistakes. Initially, when Satan wanted to be a God, we made a big mistake. When God gave us another chance, we made a bigger mistake. And you've seen the, 
It's in the proportion of how bad the humans are. And it's all ego. From Satan's ego to our ego. This is what exiled us from God's kingdom. We're in exile from God's kingdom because of our ego. And if you don't kill this ego, we will continue to be eternally exiled. Now this is our last chance in this world. It's our last chance. I mean, God is giving us a, a taste of what hell is like. This is halfway house to hell. <laughs> it is. It's amazing how many problems there are in this world that we see. Yes. This is his job. Yeah. He's doing his job. He uses he uses reverse psychology. He tells you you're bad. You're bad. <laughs> Well, you, uh, what, you, what you need to say to, to uh, Satan is that you believe God when he says repentance wipes out the sins and turns them into credits. And don't let Satan uh, trick you into, uh, into saying that uh, or giving you a guilt complex over an uh, old sin or a new sin. But yes. Right. I mean, I find myself trying to sometimes I'm stuck in mind and get safe because I don't, you know, I know like I made a mistake, but I don't want to do it again, so I don't want to do that's what repentance is all about. You're blessed that you'll never do it again, but uh, being a human, you probably will do it again a few okay. times. Until you realize that the price is too high, the pinch is too painful, or uh, the price is too high, then you will, uh, God knows, God will guide you. God says, uh, God gives you uh, the means to fight Satan. And they are worship, worshiping God regularly. You must maintain the five prayers, the fasting of Ramadan. You must be conscious of God, the uh, the uh, commemoration of God every chance you get. God must be on your mind the majority of, of the time. Because one of the khutbas that you missed was, who is your God? And the answer is, whatever you're thinking of most of the time, that's your God. So God gives us guidelines in the Quran as to how to keep uh, God in our mind the majority of the time. Like saying, insha'Allah, masha'Allah, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, in English or Arabic or in any language, as long as you think about God most of the time. So uh, reading the Quran, you have to read the Quran every day, at least two pages every day. I know you do that. I want to get, where is your copy of the new Quran? <laughs> Don't embarrass you. We have uh, copies here. Okay. Right. Yep. Ninety-two lessons from Israel. We did that. Ninety-three. Okay. So we'll talk about Moses. And 120,000 out of them, only two believed. And uh, the other half of the khutbah today was how fortunate we are in that uh, we are the generation that God showed us the miracle of the Quran, based on number 19. And uh, the last surah revealed to the Quran uh, is 19 words. And it, uh, it applies to our generation. We thank God for that. Let us. Read it. 110. Surah 110 is in page what? Because it applies to us. Six oh three, page six oh three. 
Surah 110 is triumph. The greatest triumph is to denounce our crime and believe in God alone and to worship Him alone. Last Surah Rabi, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. When triumph comes from God and victory, 19 letters in Arabic, you will see the people embracing God's religion in throngs. You shall glorify and praise your Lord and implore Him for forgiveness. He is the Redeemer. So this is the good news. We just have to be careful not to blow it this time. We blew it before a few times. This is our last chance. We better not blow it. I want to complete the picture for you that ego, like I mentioned in the whole book today, is not uh, in, that somebody comes and slaps you in the face and you turn the other cheek. This is, this is not relevant to your spiritual salvation. We talk about ego as far as God is concerned. We must kill our ego and that we have to do the five prayers and uh, regardless of what the people think. For example, past the month of Ramadan, regardless of what the people think. The people will not put you in heaven or hell. They will not save you. God is the one who will put you in heaven, inshallah. God is the one who will save you. God is the one who controls your kidneys and lungs. Controls your health, your happiness. Directly God says that in Surah 54. So God is the one who controls your happiness or misery. God is, this is Arabic. Very clearly, God controls your happiness. Nothing else. Your friends, your relatives, your parents, your children. Nobody controls your happiness or misery. God is the only one who controls happiness. Therefore, if you are wise or intelligent, you don't care what people say. You worship God and you don't care who blames you for it. One of the descriptions of the believers in the Quran, they, are, they don't worry about the blaming of the blamers. <laughs> Blaming of the blamer. They don't care about the blame. It's very important not to blow it this time. What? Uh, give the. the from your religion, God will substitute in your place people whom he loves and they love him. People who are humble with the believers, but stern with the disbelievers, and who strive in the cause of God without fear of any blamer. There's, uh, there's another verse also that is even clearer than this, but this is good enough. I'm glad we read this verse here. Or you who believe, if you revert from your religion, you know, when, you're, uh, when you shy away and you don't practice your religion, this is reverting. God will substitute in your place people whom he loves. God doesn't care. Only if you believe that he cares about you. God will substitute in your place people whom he loves and they love him. People who are humble with the believers and stern with the disbelievers. This is what I was talking about. Uh, somebody slaps you in the face. You know, with the believers are a pussy cat. With the disbelievers are a lion. It takes killing the ego to be humble with the believers. And you don't fear any blamer. Such is God's blessing. He bestows it upon whomever he wills. God is bounteous. So 
Let's go to 97. Gabriel mediates the revelation. Yes, sir. Physically, phys physically raise the mountain on top of them like an umbrella. Yep, that's one of the miracles. They've seen miracles. Only two believed in the end. That's <laughs> how bad they are. When God raised the mountain on top of them as a sign that He is speaking to them, He made a covenant with them, the Ten Commandments. I don't think it is in the Old Testament. There are some of the miracles uh, disappeared. Probably they didn't believe it or they just uh, dropped out for some reason. I, I don't remember seeing it. They are raising mountains in the way that we made mountains and the uh, shadow. No, no, no. It's just kind of a bullet. Like an umbrella. Oh, yeah. Yes. See how difficult it is to believe? Adip is wondering if it is some other raising. We were going over the previous translation. He was the translator. The umbrella? In another place, God said, I raised the mountain on top of him like an umbrella. See how the umbrella covers you? It's a miracle and it's also like a gun to your head. In desert, they need shadow. Mike, what? Who's this? Why, What did you say, Donna? I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Yes, exactly. Twice in the Quran it is mentioned. Uh, it can be also the day of the umbrella. Yom al-Dullah. It's a good... Do you have it in Turkish? Dhul? Dhul? Shadow? Shamsi, okay. Yes. 97. Gabriel mediates the revelation. Say, whoever is an enemy of Gabriel should know that he has revealed this into your heart in accordance with God's will, confirming previous scriptures and providing guidance and good news for the believers. If one opposes God, his angels, his messengers, Gabriel and Michael, then God opposes the disbelievers. What a trade. 99. We have sent down to you clear revelations, and only the wicked will reject them. Is it not a fact that whenever they make a covenant, some of them will violate it? Indeed, most of them do not believe. Proof of this belief. When a messenger came from God, when a messenger from God went to them, confirming what they have, some followers of the scripture disregarded God's scripture behind their backs as if they never had any scripture. Now, if this is uh, applicable to the Jews, for example, why did God put it here in the Quran? Because uh, all the interpretations, understanding, is that this is directed to the Jews, which is perfectly all right. But why did God put it here? It's for us to read, right? And to learn from this, and because this will be done by so-called Muslims. This is exactly what's happening today. When a messenger from God went to them, confirming what they have, some followers of the scripture, this includes Jews, Christians, and Muslims, disregarded God's scripture behind their backs, as if they never had any scripture. The announcement that uh, I mentioned today at the khutbah does not have the name of God in it whatsoever. Does not have insha'Allah. Does not follow the Quran. There is no Quran in it at all. Anyone can look at it. So they completely disregard God's script. God tells you, you must say God willing when you say we will do something. And uh, 
when we wrote about our conference, for example, we said, inshallah, we said, God willing. Because the Quran dictates that as a commandment. You must say, God willing. If you're going to talk about the future. And let the people, say, this is where you don't fear the blaming of any blamer. If they're going to laugh at you because you said, God willing, let them. I mean, what will happen to you? They laugh at you. They cannot control your happiness or health. So you say it with, with courage and enthusiasm, whether it is your boss or your professor. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. In fact, this is the whole idea. You're delivering a message when you do that. You're reminding the people that there is a God because you say, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, it's just saying the, kind of the market, I'll come back for the tomatoes, God willing, in two hours. They will, they will, they will, this reminds them that there is a God, you're doing a job, and you're benefiting your own soul. So they completely disregard the scripture. 102, witchcraft. They pursued what the devils uh, told them concerning the powers of Solomon. Remember moving the palace from one place to a place, 2,000 miles or something, 1,000 miles. Of course, this is one thing that we know about, but there were other powers uh, that the jinns did for Solomon. There were movies made about Solomon, the treasures of Solomon, where they showed some of these uh, superhuman things. Solomon, however, was not a disbeliever. In other words, he did not abuse the power that God put at his disposal. While the devils are disbelievers. Thus, they taught the people witchcraft. What is witchcraft? And magic. It's using the jinns. It's no big deal, actually. I think I could go to the library and learn magic, witchcraft. There are many books on witchcraft. In fact, you don't need any, any books. You can sit in a room and talk to the jinns until they respond to you, if you want to get in trouble. <laughs> because they are in the same room with you. And if you talk to them long enough, some rascal jinn passing by who wants to have some fun will respond to you. <laughs> and like Surah 72 tells us, they will give you trouble in the end because they're much more powerful than you, I can tell you that. So you can imagine uh, an invisible lion passing by and you're trying to pet him or something. But he's invisible. They're much, much more powerful than the lion. So it doesn't make sense that they will be your slave. They will fool you for a while. They will do certain things for you. <clears throat> and this is why those people that you see on the TV, they don't last. Because jinns will not serve them for too long. Maybe a few months and then they disappear. Otherwise, it would have been big hits. And uh, I remember uh, one of them, uh, when the election was between Carter and Reagan, this uh, this uh, ESB fellow using the jinns was on the Today Show <laughs> two weeks before the elections, and he gave Jane uh, Jane Pauley, that's her name, yeah. yeah. He gave her an envelope, sealed envelope, and he said, "This envelope will have who won the elections and how many votes. If it is Reagan or Carter, and how many votes. I will come back on the election the next day of the election. We'll open the envelope, and you're going to see in it." the winner, and the number of votes. You know, unfortunately, I didn't see that, that program, but he probably came and they probably opened the envelope and saw that the winner was Reagan and how many votes. So how did that happen? They show you on TV somebody who's standing on a, on a stage and some person in the audience will take his wallet out and this fellow on the stage will read what's in the wallet, the money, the driver's license. How does he do this? He's using gents. Now, this is fantastic, right? And it should be a show that will last for 10 years. But they don't. Because the jinn will go read the wallet and will come and whisper it in his ears and he will read the thing and everybody will be impressed. But next week, <laughs> when he wants to use the jinn again, the jinn will say, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Who do you think you are? And they will not cooperate. Surah 72. Usually it is the last time you see them on the TV. The jinn is having fun. National TV. <laughs> you know. 
impressing the audience and all that. But they don't last. For one thing, we can take a trip that is ten, ten light years away. Then they lose their, uh, <laughs> their cooperating uh, entity. So, uh, I want to go back to 102. Solomon did not, uh, uh, was not a disbeliever why the devils are disbelievers. Thus, they taught the people witchcraft that was sent down through the two angels of Babel, Harut and Marut. These two did not divulge such knowledge without pointing out that this is a test. You shall not abuse such knowledge. So God actually sent the knowledge to the planet Earth as part of the test to see who's going to use it, who's going to abuse it. And as you know, a lot of people do abuse it. You should come to Egypt to see what they do. But the people used it in such evil schemes as the breaking up of marriages. They can never harm anyone against the will of God. They learn only what hurts them, not what benefits them. And they knew full well that whoever practices such evil will have no share in the hereafter. Miserable indeed is what they sold their souls for, if they only knew. So when you hear about this phenomenon in the newspaper, you understand exactly what is happening. 103. Had they believed and led a righteous life, the reward from God would have been far better if they only knew. Twisting the words of supplication. 104. O you who believe, do not say, Ra'ina, be our shepherd. You should say, Unzurna, watch over us and listen. The disbelievers have incurred a painful retribution. You can generalize this if there are words that sound like bad words. You don't have to use them. It's better to avoid them. So this doesn't apply to people who do not speak Arabic, but it will apply as a general rule. I was talking to somebody the other day about, uh, I was talking to Robert actually, about uh, university degrees and so on, and I repeated the word BS a lot. But this word BS sounds like a bad word in the general language. So, oh, you can get a BS by doing this and that and studying this and that. It means a bachelor's degree. But uh, BS has other meanings. So it is better to avoid uh, using those words. But it's actually what it is. <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, tell us about it, Tisco. Yes, exactly. It's a bunch of BS. <laughs> <laughs> Just give an example. <laughs> Where is Robert? I thought Robert was here. Oh, Robert is there. 105. Jealousy condemned. Neither the disbelievers among the followers of the scripture, like Bayunus, nor the idol worshippers, wish to see any blessings come your way from your Lord. However, God showers his blessings upon whomever he chooses. God possesses infinite grace. I think uh, I'm very proud of Afami and Narmi, for example, because they went through so much jealousy and people harassing them. <laughs> About going to Masjid Tucson, but they steadfastly persevered. And this is why they're in for lots of rewards, inshallah. Hey, Nami, how come every time I call a deep house, you answer the phone? <laughs> I mean, your sister is married now. <laughs> MashaAllah. <laughs> I love it, though. It's beautiful. Is that right? <laughs> Explain it when, when Alpha May is here and they call and you ask. <laughs> well, as, as long as you don't keep a dip on the couch outside in the living room, it's okay. 
other than sex. <laughs>
from a country that is famous for witchcraft. And she was trying to stop me. So she practiced witchcraft on me. But what happened was that the gender that was supposed to carry out that, since it is against God's will, I didn't deserve it, I didn't do anything wrong at that day, on that day, the, uh, the jinn was sent back and did that thing to that person. And she almost died. And, uh, we have a few witnesses. Real, this is real, witchcraft. I'm telling you, she almost died. She was paralyzed. What country? Haiti? Haiti? Haiti is, is the full of voodoo. And, uh, voodoo, for example, is that real? Is voodoo real? It is real. And it is jinn. When you make a doll that looks like Mahtasham, <laughs> and you get a pin, <laughs> and, and the jinn, what the jinn does, now the jinn does, you know, are very fast. They see that you're poking, uh, pulling his ear, for example, so they go and pull his ear. <laughs> this is the mechanism of it. It's real. I mean, this is what the Quran is teaching us. Yes. Well, everything ultimately is the will of God. Okay, but I want you to understand this: that the bad things are from us, good things are from God. For example, I use the example of the fire. We send this stove on. It is God's law that if you put your finger in the fire, it will hurt. Right? It's God's law. So it is the will of God that if you put your finger in the fire, it will hurt. But if you use the fire to cook, you will burn rice. The first, the Iranian people burn rice at the bottom. You know, they, they don't know how to cook rice. So they, <laughs> You, you can use the you can use the fire. That's my favorite part, the burn rice. <laughs> yeah, at first they were saying, "Oh, the dumb guy, you know, he doesn't think we do it on purpose." But anyway, so you can use the fire to cook your food or to burn your finger. So if you use it to cook the food, it's from God. If you burn your finger, it's from you, because you decided to put your finger in the fire. But not every people are divorced are because of witchcraft. However, you do use witchcraft for this. If it is in accordance with God's will, if these people are out of God's protection, they, uh, the gents will, will, uh, will uh, bother them. But you are, when you are in God's protection, nothing can touch you. They cannot touch you. What if um, individuals have tried to, you know, hurt, you know, two other people? And they were hurt for a while, and then they got better, and the other person backfired on them. You know, and they were ultimately the ones, you know, who were stopped. But still, they were hurt. You know, sometimes. Yes. I don't know if it was witchcraft or not, or whatever. That was in accordance with God's will. They were not uh, protected at the time, for some reason. But this day, they can repent any time. They can join God's protection any time. Then the jinns who are, who are bothering them will not will not be able to do anything anymore. When you are in God's kingdom, nothing can touch you. This is the this is the message that we've been living it. We've been living it for 11, 12 years now. Yeah. So uh, our confidence is is, uh, is increasing. It is now absolute. When God tells you, I guarantee you perfect happiness, perfect uh, health, perfect wealth. God means it and does it. So uh, using the gems, remember the angels who are guarding you are much stronger. But if you're out of God's protection, if you're a, if the person is bad and is against God and other worshippers, the angels are guarding him hate him. <laughs> so when a gent comes to slap him in the face, they say, Yeah, be my guest. <laughs> this is what this is what the mechanism is of uh, being out of God's protection. <laughs> right. They're not protected if they are not uh, strong believers within them. It is uh, most people are out of God's protection. Let's face it. And it takes discipline, uh, strength, and worshiping God, practicing, in order to be protected. Remember uh, the verses, uh, Surah 41. Let me give you the conditions of being in God's protection. Page uh, 480, verse 30. It says, Those who say, Our Lord is God, Okay, we say our Lord is God alone. But that's not all. Then lead a righteous life. So it takes discipline and work. Worshipping God, the five daily prayers. 
In fact, when you miss a prayer, you're out of God's protection, even though you're a believer. When you miss a prayer, you're out of God's protection, but God puts limits, though, on on uh, how much how much uh, you pay, how much how hard the pinch is. We learn this very well from the Old Testament and the Quran, that God puts limits on the jinn, Satan, your enemies, so that you don't uh, get uh, more of a pinch than you deserve. So when you miss a prayer, you get a pinch. This is how we come to realize that God runs the world, controls everything. Yeah. 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 When you um, give credit to like the evil eye, I mean, I've seen cases of people actually healthy burning incense in the evil eye waves. This is all over the I, Middle East, yes. I mean, this is huge mercy. God, you go to God, you don't need to pray. I mean, to me, that's this kind of life is witchcraft because you're giving the gems the credit to think you're not doing enough. You're absolutely right, and he knows that too. Oh, yeah, he knows, but his family. I thought they were crazy. I had a baby with an infant. I'm like grabbing the baby. I'm like, what are you doing? And they're going, no, yeah. you didn't lie away. And I really right. stopped into the window. Yeah. yeah. It's funny how they, this is all over the world. They believe that. They have all kinds of strange things. Yeah, because the smoke is going to. It took me seven times. Did you count? I took it away. I'm sure they did it seven times anyway. <laughs> <laughs> then they took the baby. That was the grandchild. Okay. The ultimate miracle, the Quran's mathematical code, 106. When we abrogate any miracle or cause it to be forgotten, we bring a better miracle or at least an equal one. Do you not know that God is omnipotent? Do you not know that God possesses the kingship of the heavens and the earth and you have none besides God as your Lord and Master? Do you wish to demand of your messenger what was demanded of Moses before? Anyone who substitutes disbelief for belief has truly strayed off the right path. The, uh, do you not know that God is omnipotent? I mean, this miracle, this mathematical miracle, this long sheet on the wall over there, which is uh, a very tiny fraction of the miracle, is, uh, is just too awesome for words. And it's a very simple thing, but it teaches that God is omnipotent. I just, I can't describe it in words. How can you manipulate the numbers in this way? The physical structure of the Quran, 114 surahs, every surah is a specific number of verses. And you put these numbers in any combination, and it comes out a month of 19. It's almost a physical impossibility. Of course, it is not a physical impossibility, because we see it, but... For the humans and the jinns, it is a physical impossibility. God's greatness is indescribable. And God is telling us that uh, those miracles of Moses and Jesus are, uh, are nothing. God can bring better miracles. 109. Many followers of the scripture actually wish to revert you now that you have believed into disbelievers. This is due to jealousy on their part. After the truth has become evident to them, you shall pardon them and leave them alone. Until God issues his judgment, God is omnipotent. Those uh, idol-worshipping Sunnis, for example, they would rather see you uh, a Christian or a Jew or an atheist than what you are now, I believe. They would rather see you disbelieve. And this was reflected uh, very clearly when, uh, at uh, the meeting in Los Angeles when this guy gave a research, a lecture, saying that the Qur'an was hallucinations of Muhammad. And they stood up, and they stood up and they gave uh, the, the evidence that the Qur'an is from God. Who did they attack? They're actually the same people who are meeting in Chicago next week. They attacked me, they didn't attack the other guy who said the Qur'an is hallucination. They attacked the guy who says the Qur'an is from God. They would rather see me say the Qur'an is hallucination of Muhammad. So the Quran is really accurate in this is describing them. 110. This is a commandment to you and me. You shall observe the contact, prayer, salat, and give the obligatory charity, zakat. 
Any good you send forth on behalf of your soul will end up in your, what is it, PRA? PRA, most determined account. You will find it at God. God is seer of everything you do. Now I know for a fact that it takes time to uh, to complete to do the contact prayers all five of them. But be sure you go, you move forward. You always move forward. For example, if you may start by doing the morning prayer, especially the young people, you may start by doing the morning prayer only. But be sure that uh, you move forward, not backwards. So next time you do the, the noon, the, the morning and the night prayer. That's two of them for a while, for a few months maybe. And don't be discouraged that you cannot do the others. Then you do the morning, the night, and the noon. As long as you keep growing, you do all right. But don't hear this commandment and ignore it. You shall observe the contact prayer salat and give the obligatory charity as a can. Can't keep ignoring it. This is God, God ordering you to do this. The five prayers. This is really the minimum that we can do. And it helps you a lot. You come a long way towards having God as your God. Just the five prayers. And you come a long way. And as I mentioned repeatedly before, God wants the strong and the disciplined in His kingdom. He does not want the lazy ones. God wants the strong and the disciplined who can do the five prayers. You must force your body to do the five prayers every day. If you're not doing them, you're not being fair to yourself. You're suffering too much unnecessarily. Because everything will be straightened in your life if you do the five prayers. And you must be hard on yourself. Put your quote-unquote self on trial. And tell yourself you are mad. Self. You must do the five prayers. Why don't you do the five prayers? You must keep after yourself. Until you do carry out this command 110. But don't let Satan discourage you, as I said. Just as long as you move forward, you shall observe the contact prayer, salat, and give the obligatory charity the cat. And this is, uh, the rest of the verse tells us that this is what you're depositing in your PRA. This is what uh, you, be you, you benefit now. You receive interest now. Fringe benefit. Any good you send forth on behalf of your souls, you will find it as God. God is here of everything you do. 111. They said no one will enter paradise unless he is Jewish or Christian. Such is wishful thinking on their part. Say, show us your proof if you are truthful. And uh, the Muslims, so-called Muslims, fall in the same trap. They say the Jews and the Christians will not go to heaven. Because the Quran tells us otherwise. Is anyone who worships God alone will make it to heaven. The criterion is to worship God alone. There's a book circulating in the United States now that was written in Saudi Arabia. And uh, in it they say, if you meet a Christian or a Jew, you must ask them to repent. <laughs> if they don't repent, you must kill them. This is the book. Yes. Yeah. It's a book entitled The Muslims Believe. Imagine that. It's unbelievable, right? I mean, I don't blame you if you don't believe me, but this is true. <laughs> you can come and read it for yourself. I have it. I have the review of it in my desk. It's incredible. Huh? Yes, both of them, yes. The translator and the writer of both doctors from Wami. World. Assembly. World Assembly of Muslim, Muslim Youth. I was a member of this. <laughs> you what? <Yes. laughs> Deep used to be a member of WAMI. Don't worry, we all were. <laughs> yes, of course. He's, he, uh, he was the first president of. Yes, yes I know him very well. Uh, 112. Indeed, here's the answer. Those who devote themselves absolutely to God 
And it doesn't tell you if it's a Hindu or a Buddhist or a Muslim or what. Those who devote themselves absolutely to God alone, while leading a righteous life, will receive the recompense from their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. This is similar to the verse 62. That names names, says the Jews, the Christians, the converts, the Muslims, any of them who devote themselves absolutely to God and lead a righteous life, they will receive the recompense from the Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. The advantage that you have over the Jew or the Christian is that they lost the contact prayer. You have the contact prayer. You have the complete message from God and you have the complete practices. Nothing was lost. So the difference is that it's like a person who's going to uh, Boulder, Colorado without a map and a person who's going with a map. You have a map. <laughs> they have a map from 1800. They don't even have the map. They lost it. Surah 19. So, uh, God says He will give them credit for any worship that they do, but it is just, it is the hard way. It takes longer. They don't grow at the same rate as you do. Because what you're following, did you see the mathematical coding of Al-Fatiha? You don't have Al-Fatiha. God gave us this and it causes you to grow much faster, more efficiently. But they're still, they get credit for worshiping God alone. Hundred and thirteen. The Jews said the Christians have no basis. Well the Christians said the Jews have no basis, although they both read the same the scripture, not the same scripture. Both of them read the scripture. Those who possess knowledge, no knowledge, have uttered the same kind of utterances. God will judge them all on the day of resurrection regarding their disputes. Does what does this say? Says the Jews said the Christians have no basis, the Christians say the Jews have no basis, even though both read the scripture. So God is saying that you can reach God through either way. As long as you or they worship God alone, devote yourself to God alone and lead a righteous life. Did you say something? I said those who possess no knowledge shall utter the same kind of utterances. It's just Muslims today. Yes, exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, a few, yes. quite a few. In fact, we passed uh, maybe coming up, and uh, we passed a couple of them. Uh, okay, 114. You shall frequent the mosques. That's why we are here. Who are more evil than those who boycott God's mosques, where His name is commemorated, and contribute to their desertion? These ought not to enter therein except fearfully. They have incurred humiliation in this life and severe retribution in the hereafter. So we must encourage each other to frequent the mosques. The Quranic study is a perfect example, of course. The people who need this advice are not here. <laughs> 115. To God belongs the East and the West. Wherever you go, there will be the face of God. God is omnip omnipresent, omniscient. You must also observe God wherever you may be. In addition to coming to the mosque. Gross blasphemy. They said God has begotten his son. Be he glorified. Never. To him belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. All are subservient to him. Of course, as we increase, our knowledge increases and we realize how vast our universe is. And how vast the other universes are. And that they're all in God's hand. With this knowledge, we realize how ridiculous such a statement is. It's like... It's not even like that, but it's like saying uh, you're the father of a virus. Here's your son. Go find an electronic microscope to see. Your dear son. <laughs> you have to love your son. 
And right here. On the tip of my fingers. A few viruses, probably. So ridiculous. 117. He is the initiator of the heavens and the earth. To have anything done, he simply says, do it be, and it is. Those who possess no knowledge have said, if only God could speak to us or some miracle could come to us. Others before them have uttered the same kind of utterances. Their minds are similar. We do manifest the miracles for those who have attained certainty. This is a very important principle. When you attain certainty, you see miracles. 119. We have sent you with the truth as a bearer of good news as well as a warning. And you are not answerable for those who have incurred hell. I'm going to stop right here. Dr. Sabah, you want to take the Quranic study next week? Did you say only one? Huh? Okay. You don't want to take the Quranic study as well? Okay. Oh, you will not be here? Oh, okay. Where is Lori? You didn't come last week, right? You did? Oh, I thought you had a football game or something. <laughs> In fact, I meant to call you the next morning, then I forgot. Oh, okay. I thought I asked a few people. But anyway. So, Lori will give us the Quranic study next week, inshallah. Are there any questions before we close this study? It's okay, I have any general questions here. Was it uh, Yes, it is divine. And it is Bara. No. It was Bara until about a uh, hundred years ago. And they changed it. So what what I'm doing here is take everything back to the original, including the names of the sources. The names of the sources are divine. Uh, no, I didn't need to because uh, it is known actually equally as Bara and Tauba, so I didn't need. I didn't. It probably does. Probably does. So not we're not aware yet. Probably. Because the names must stay the way they came down. Uh, let me see. The numbers of the surahs, yes. But the names. I have some significant use, but it's not all uh, about the surahs. There are some surahs that the name of the surah right. relates with some very interesting. Yes. I'm sure there are, I'm sure there will be, because everything in the Quran is mathematically coded. So far we don't have anything uh, established yet. But uh, this surah, according uh, to also traditional knowledge, also has two names. It's a Tawbah or Baraya, and it's called Baraya. It's called Baraya. Yes, it is, uh, it is well known as Baraya and Tawbah, but Tawbah is the strange name, it's the foreign name. In fact, I see it here, we should have changed that. The Arabic. Sorry about that. Yes. The next edition I will change this uh, Arabic name also. Bara. Yes, I'm sure there is uh, some mathematical basis for it. That's a good question. Yeah, the names of the Surahs divinely was divinely inspired. That's why this is the heifer, for example, and not anything else. Even though there are many important subjects in this Surah. But if you look at the old books, all the old them say Bara up to a hundred years ago. Then this name Tauba starts to appear in the, in the less than hundred year old books. Any other questions? Well, let us. Uh, we're celebrating Abhame's birthday today. He's <laughs> born in two days. <laughs> Well, her birthday was in the middle of the week, so yeah. she gets yeah. two fatty hats. <laughs> also, it's a good
good excuse to have some cake. <laughs> Nobody's birthday until uh, Nobody's October 12th is Gatut this year. The next birthday is October 12th, that's Gatut. So, uh, <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? Yeah, this is the Fatiha for Frank's trip. You have a good one. And the uh, Fatiha for Afa May, that may God give her a very happy year coming up. And there may be a little one at the end of that year. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> and every year to be even happier, every year after that. Al Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm al-Din. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إذن الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Congratulations, God bless you. Very fortunate. Uh, the Quran and congratulations for starting with the new translation. And uh, I want to tell you right now that uh, it's, uh, this was made obsolete before it came out of the press, <laughs> which is a very great sign that we must be congratulated about because we are advancing faster than the press can work. For example, uh, you see, you've seen the title page uh, down this in Islamic Productions Tucson. The next edition, the United Submitted to International Tucson. For example, just to give you an idea why this is this was obsolete before it came out of the press. And uh, throughout the translation, <coughs> Islam will be submission and Muslim will be submitted. And the translation will be uh, uh, universalized. Because it is not appropriate, this word Production is not appropriate. Because Islam is Arabic, production is English. Uh, in Arabic, we call the Christian person Nusrani. But when you say Christian productions, we don't say Nusrani productions. We say Christian productions. The whole thing is English. Also, it, it, this is uh, a stage. You can see that uh, God wants to put the whole world to test. When the miracle of the Quran appeared first, the title was the perpetual miracle of Muhammad. It was in Arabic, Mu'jizat Muhammad al-Khalid. And it was uh, distributed as such. They still have the labels as such. But the Arabs and the traditional uh, Muslims still could not understand the miracle. So it is not the, the current excuse that uh, Rashad Khalifa has gone crazy or whatever excuses they, they, they use are not true, are not accepted. They don't, even if they say, we don't accept this miracle of the Quran because Rashad Khalifa is crazy. They cannot do that. Because initially, the miracle was cited, the miracle of Muhammad, the perpetual miracle of Muhammad, which is true, because it came through the Prophet Muhammad, God sent it to the world, through the Prophet, in the Quran, and was there the whole time. And still the Arabs, as you see the, from the last issue, mainly the Arabs could not understand it, were not permitted to understand it. And then it progressed, God willed that it progressed, and it became universalized, it became just absolute miracle there, and it didn't matter how they accepted it or not. Same with the first translation and with this translation, they cannot say this is not, you see, they cannot go on the knees on the... Uh, Fine of the book, and it says Islamic and there's no, it says the only religion acceptable to God is Islam. So you just uh, go flip a couple of pages, see, pro pro proclaiming one religion for all the people. And you can see the translation in the first rectangle saying the only religion acceptable to God is Islam. So even though it is very clearly in uh, harmonizing with their language, you will note pretty sure that they don't accept this translation because God wants to prove something, prove their defiance regardless of what, uh, even if you agree with them. <laughs>
because even if you agree with them and you present the truth to them of worshiping God alone and upholding the word of God alone, they are just, they do not have it in their heart. And uh, God will not allow them, does not permit them, as we read in many, many verses of the Quran, God does not permit them to accept the truth. In Surah 43, we're told that on the day of judgment, they will say, the God of hell, <coughs> uh, let your Lord finish us off. And the garden of hell, the angel of hell will tell them, no, you're going to stay like this forever. We have brought the truth to you, we have presented the truth to you, but most of you hate the truth. Which is true, they really, they really hate the truth. It is something that uh, was incomprehensible. How can people hate the truth? But it is, it happens, they demonstrate it continuously. They hate the truth. And uh, they will hate anything to do, to do with God, or anything to do with the truth. And they want to stay away from it as far as possible. And this is documented in the Quran. So uh, this is why I'm just trying to explain to you why this was obsolete before it came out of the, of the press. It's also every step of this book, every step was guided by God. And we had many, many signs that we'll, we'll be talking about in the future from now on. But I want to share with you the, the last sign about this book. I was supposed to pick it up from the press on the 18th, Friday the 18th, which is the last day of the week. And this was done uh, 50 days before that time. We, we submitted the originals and they put, put the schedule and it was scheduled to be released on the 18th, which is the end of the week. On the 17th when I called, I said, okay, I'm coming to pick it up. They were very apologetic and they said they will work the weekend because the book will be finished on the 19th, which is a Saturday. So this is another quite a sign because there are so many, so many departments. As you see from the book, it's a big printer. It is the same printer that prints books for the University of Arizona Press and to some of the most famous universities around the country. And uh, there have many departments and every department has its own problems and delays and so on. But the book was finished on the 19th. And on the 19th, I was in Washington, D.C. And uh, I was driving with uh, Ahsan. I just decided to be a tourist. So I went out to the tourist areas, Lincoln Memorial, Washington Memorial, the, uh, the Capitol, and so on. And we were uh, just leaving Lincoln Memorial, driving back to his house. And all of a sudden, all the license plates, now this, is, this may be superstition, but God gives us messages through our superstitions. I want you to know this too, from my experience, and probably you all had these experiences. If you're superstitious, for example, that if you wake up in the morning and see a butterfly standing in the northern corner, northwest corner of your, your house, in the roof, this means you'll have a good day. And this is superstition. Then God will speak to you through that superstition. And when you have a good day, if God wants to tell you so, He will tell you a butterfly in the northwest corner of the roof of your house. That's what you know. So anyway, about one o'clock, on Saturday, the 19th of August, and I was driving back from Lincoln Memorial, all of a sudden, all the license plates around us, almost all of them, were divisible by 19. On both sides, people parked, and in the cars parked on both sides. And it was really a very strange phenomenon. I've never in my life seen so many divisible numbers. So, license plates. I said, what is going on? What is happening? What is this? And then we came to a street that is only about six or seven blocks from Hassan's house called Reed. The street, the name of the street is Reed, and the corner is Perpetual Savings. We have also two people from Washington, D.C. They know the area, Gale and Mobile. Yeah. Uh, Perpetual Savings on Reed Street, and the first car in front of us that we're going to turn left is number 114. So this is it. The book is being finished now, so I'm going to check with the press. <laughs> I said, this is it. must be that the book is being finished now. And uh, and I, sure enough, when I, I went there, I said, I'm just curious, when did you finish yesterday? You know, you worked on the weekend, I really appreciate it. And what time did you finish? Said, oh, between 1 and 2 o'clock. <laughs> so, hmm, I knew that. <laughs> so that was the last sign. So anyway, every step of this, when you find any typing errors or anything, you can be sure that uh, they are designed by God. Because God creates uh, loopholes for the disbelievers to, to insist on going to hell. Uh, so every, every step of this book was designed by God. 
And this fits in with Adib's khutbah today, by the way. Uh, if you find any uh, already uh, Emily found uh, a minor mistake where I forgot to put Arabic, the Arabic word next to it. So uh, all these things are guided by God. Uh, I think it is at the beginning of Surah 7. I wanted uh, the first verse I wanted to look at in the new translation is in Surah 7 at the beginning, I think, or 6, 6 or 7. I'm going to find out exactly the Surah, uh, the Surah, the verse number. Give me just a second and find it right here. Surah 6, verse 9. Okay, let's read it together. Surah 6, verse 9. The top of page 129. Subtitle is requirement, requirements of the test. And it says, had we sent an angel, we would have sent him in the form of a man, and would have kept him confused, as they are confused now. <laughs> So that was uh, Adib's khutbah today. God said, even if I sent an angel, I would send him in the form of a human being, a goofy one, and confuse the heck out of them, just, just as they are confused now. So uh, it is a requirement that God... Uh, number 10 says, messengers before you have been ridiculed. Those who mocked them have incurred the consequences of their ridicule. <coughs> it's because the disbelievers, God creates these loopholes for the disbelievers. Perfectness. If God sends an angel, the whole world will believe. There is an angel who is mighty and strange looking, has these powers and, and, and so on. What, what is the big deal? What is the test? But uh, we are fortunate in that sense that, uh, that uh, we are passing very difficult tests at very special times, and uh, I'm, I'm passing them along with you and telling you because more than 90% of the time I'm, I'm required, just as you are, to believe certain things that I did not know before, in the past. So I know it is very difficult. Uh, in fact, uh, I probably was the, uh, the most lax in power. Among, there were many of you who may have more courage than me, because for, for eight years I was a secret, a secret uh, agent. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, I can't bring out the world. So it is just as difficult. I realize how difficult it is. So congratulations to all of you. You are very, very uh, fortunate people. Alhamdulillah, and, uh, I know you know it. Okay, we'll uh, just take the book from the cover. Yes. Oh, we planned it this way for a long time. No, that's another good sign, you know. Because uh, here, well, the first time we got hold of the new Quran, we're starting from the beginning of the Quran. Yes. ISBN? Oh yeah, I see. Wow. Did you tell me this before? No, you already forgot it, but this is really something. Yeah. The ISBN number, this stands for in the International Standard Book Number. And it is a unique number that no other book in the world has it. So I guess if you add 934894 plus 57 plus 1, you get a divisible number. We didn't plan it, we didn't design it this way. Okay.